okay uh yeah welcome back everyone so we've been talking about the overcomers lifestyle and we said that uh, as long as we can maintain our um, relationship with god and um, and you know that uh, walk of uh, submission and consecration uh, we are in a good place that satan can't just keep bringing attacks uh, upon us now let's see a few more things that we can have so that uh, you know we walk protected against the enemy so the next thing is the armor of god uh, and this is uh, there for us in ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18 uh, and there are different parts of the armor that are explained and as i was sharing earlier this uh, paul you know for the people to understand the roman soldiers those days had this armor uh, so he used those parts uh, to tell how believers can protect themselves against satan the their spiritual enemy so as part of the armor you know he lists out helmet of salvation breastplate of righteousness belt of truth shoes of the gospel sword the word of god shield of faith okay uh, now shield of faith is it protects you as well as it um you know you you can use it against the enemy as well so it's offensive as well as defensive so he uses this imagery to let the uh, believer know that a believer should be ready so when do you wear an armor you don't just wear an armor on a good day but when there is war when the situation is such that any moment you know anything can happen the enemy can attack from every any side you have the armor on so for a believer this is our regular uh, you know attire though we can't see in the natural in the spiritual realm we are required to be ready for this enemy you know uh, any believer who says oh i didn't know that satan can uh, uh, influence my thoughts oh i didn't know that satan can influence my situations i was not prepared we don't have that excuse we have to be prepared because that's what uh, paul writes in fact he he says you know uh, ephesians 6:12 a battle is not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers rulers of wickedness so he lists out the spiritual enemies for facing the enemy i need to have the armor on and i've explained some parts of the armor earlier so i'm not going to go into it one more time but know that it is a defense so uh, let's say <clears throat> the believer does not have the belt of truth or the believer does not um, know the truth of god's word you know what does god's word say about something about uh, money about bribery about uh, corruption you know about extortion so uh, excuse me a believer when you don't know the truth easier to be manipulated isn't it by satan and his influence he'll say ah do this do that and i don't know what the bible says so okay fine you know do whatever or a believer <clears throat> does not know about the power of the tongue we saw how life and death is in the power of the tongue now if satan can influence ha ah, say this say that here is a furious believer no control on what they are speaking and they speak curses speak A lot of negative things. So what's happening? The belt of truth is lacking. We don't have that armor on, you know, piece of the armor on. So we are becoming vulnerable if we are missing out on the pieces of the armor. That's the point. So every believer at all times should have all parts of the armor on, and then you know, Satan is not able to touch us. Okay. it's just a simple example breastplate of righteousness so one is my righteousness comes from god i'm aware of that i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus so when satan tries to attack me and says 
oh you are no good god does not accept you this and that you say no 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 i am already redeemed i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus that is one positionally then through life you are doing what is righteous okay it is right for me to uh, you know say this or say that do this or do that okay i will not be doing this because it is wrong okay so what's happening a believer is walking in the right path so then you could just imagine you know the whole animation like it's like a breastplate of righteousness it's covering the heart of the believer so heart is protected so important no head has to be protected it's very important helmet of salvation you are aware who am i in christ jesus and what are my blessings uh, as a person who is saved now if there's a dart coming to your head protected important part dart coming to your heart protected breastplate of righteousness so every believer there's no question of removing the the armor as long as we are walking on the earth full have the full armor on okay uh, and if we have the armor on we will be able to overcome the attacks of the devil uh and also another thing that we see about this uh, armor is usually it was only for protection of the front of the soldier so the assumption is that the soldier will face the enemy so there's really for the roman soldiers there is really nothing great to protect their back because again the assumption is soldier is not going to run away because only when you run away you will turn your back and run right and then you get hit on your back so the believer will face the devil and still be protected because of all these things that you know one one uh, puts on okay um so that brings our protection now some people also you know just we're talking in terms of the armor of god some people also say that uh, the roman soldiers to protect their back what they would do sometimes is they would make a make a group shield group shield um is you know when everyone stands next to each other okay and make something like a circle or something what then what they do is they'll all hold their shield and they will move in that formation they will move in that formation so what happens every you know every side outside has shields and breastplates and all that so the darts of the devil can't get them their backs are protected by other soldiers so again you know it is said that when we walk in godly loving a uh, peaceful community that is also a protection satan cannot attack us so easily so have the armor on as an individual and as a community and that is a place of protection then for me to have an overcomer's life <laughs> excuse me faith okay faith is so important you know in the armor we have what is known as the shield of faith shield of faith is an offensive weapon that weapon that uh, offensive part of the armor because you can move it around and uh, if an arrow is directed uh, what they could also do is kind of deflect the arrow right if uh, possible just deflect it on to another place so or they can use it to literally bang someone physically so it's an offensive weapon in that sense faith is very important a believer without faith is a good target for the devil so i mean when we don't have faith in you know who god is or that you know the nature of god when god said uh, that he is our deliverer we don't have faith in that or that he is our provider when we lack faith in any area of our lives you know, those are vulnerable uh, places where the enemy can try to come in so we have to maintain our faith 
and uh, how much faith is required you know jesus said uh, in uh, uh, matthew 17 he said that mustard seed faith that's all you need like little bit little bit of faith to move the mountains so every believer i'm sure you know, we can carry at least that much of faith in our lives and it is our responsibility to uh, preserve or guard our faith <laughs> sorry how do you how do you guard your faith mm, by being in the word of god okay because we see that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so without the word we will not produce faith and if there is no faith we are a good target there's no shield shield has come down and so if satan tries to attack it will hit okay, so faith is important and whatever we do in our lives uh faith has to be the leading force you know whatever is not a faith is sin the bible says so live life with faith in what you know god has called us to do in what we are doing today the decisions we are making let it all be faith decisions and we know that when we make that journey of faith you know like abraham you have put your trust in the promises of god i know god will lead me i'm doing what god's word says i'm i'm doing the righteous thing because uh, you know this is what god's word says and he is a rewarder he is a rewarder of uh, those who diligently seek him so what does that take it takes faith what if i don't believe that god will definitely you know uh, uh bless my life then i have no faith i'm like okay god if you want to bless you bless if you don't want to bless where is the faith isn't it so everything needs faith and uh, through the word we can have faith in who god is we can have faith in the promises of god the word of god and it really gives us a uh, protection from the devil okay so maintain faith don't let your faith level come down at any point so every day spending time in prayer spending time in god's word all that is so important because what are we doing we are building ourselves up you know we are building ourselves up uh, in in faith okay also praying in the spirit praying in the spirit is so crucial isn't it so yeah uh, we must hold on to faith and in this case uh matthew 17 uh, it's also a passage where the disciples of jesus they were not able to cast out demons and then you know they tried to go back and ask jesus okay jesus what went wrong you know which point was it was it you know mind games or uh, open doors or basically they're checking on the teachings that they received what what did we do wrong which chapter did we miss here when he says this kind shall not go uh, except without you know uh, fasting and prayer and though he didn't mention it fasting and prayer has an effect on our faith so that is what he was saying he was saying it was because of your unbelief why uh, jesus why couldn't we cast out because of your unbelief okay but if you deal with the unbelief and build faith then what will happen then you can even cast out demons so keep faith and uh, faith is so critical when you are facing the demonic realm they can't take it if you are a person of faith okay now next is intercession intercession is helpful to protect ourselves and you know people whom god puts on our hearts now if you recall there was a time in luke 22 where jesus talking about peter he says you know peter satan has desired to sift you like uh, wheat but i have prayed for you before peter goes through something jesus prays for him so somebody praying for another person is called what intercession 
Jesus interceded for Peter, which is what, you know, helped him come out of that situation, which is what helped him overcome that situation. And even today, prayer, it's like prayer, I'm sorry, it'll, you, you could just, I'm just giving, uh, you know, a, a, a way to understand it. It's like it creates a shield, you could say. So there is a shield that is created uh, for yourself or your family member or you know, people whom you <clears throat> care about, church people. So uh, through intercession, there can be protection against the wiles of the devil. You know that you, I'm sure even you've heard so many testimonies, isn't it? That people prayed um, uh, and when they went out, you know, something risky happened to another person, but they were safe. Okay, because you know, maybe their mother was praying for them or something like that. So when somebody is interceding, when there's prayers going up, God's protection comes over people's lives. Okay, and there are you know, so many testimonies that we could actually talk about. Uh, and when we talk about intercession, there is prophetic intercession. Okay. In the um, book of Amos, we saw that, you know, God shows him that I'm going to bring judgment through fire. I'm going to bring judgment through locusts. So what does he do? When he comes to know, he starts interceding as per the revelation. That is known as prophetic intercession. So even for us, we could have the knowledge that something is going to happen or Satan is going to do this or that. So when we come to know and we raise up prayers, what happens? It sort of cuts the plan of the devil and there is protection. Okay. Uh, so in this manner, we, we can uh, uh, truly be led by God and be um, protected from Satan's tactics. One is protected. Second is demolish his tactics. So prayer is very, very important. You know, sometimes... <clears throat> we look at uh, like, uh, you know, in different ones of uh, in our uh, situations, like at least in my example, it was more of my grandmother and my mother. Okay. So they were very prayerful, like to talk about my grandmother, I would say that uh, just before going to bed, she will get on her knees. And that's what I have seen of her that, oh, she's praying. And then I'll go to bed. Then morning when I wake up, it'll be like uh, midnight or, you know, early mornings. And she'll still be on her knees. Or in the morning when I wake up, she'll still be on her knees. So I'll be like, what is she doing? That was my thing of my grandmother. Oh, okay. And I close my eyes, she's on her knees. When I open my eyes, she's on her knees. So we could look at intercession and uh, think, oh, what is the big deal? Or we could even look at uh, people like our grandmothers and mothers and, you know, so-called not so strong looking people and think, what is the power in it? But, you know, God, God's, there's something that is unlocked in the kingdom of God when we engage in prayer, intercession for one another, you know, that's that shield of protection. And even if, it is the enemy trying to raise up a standard. We know that the Holy Spirit will come and crush it, you know, even as we pray. So intercession is so important. If we can do that for our family members and our loved ones, uh, we can uh, see, you know, God's protection. Okay, so that's about intercession. So we can have that as a part of our lives. Uh, then moving on to fasting. Fasting, you know, once again, fasting, we have studied thoroughly in uh, the subject called prayer and intercession. Some of you probably have not taken that class, but it's available for you on, uh, you know, that APC uh, Bible College YouTube channel. You can go to the prayer and intercession uh, classes and look up, you know, fasting. and It covers entirely what fasting does. Now, one of the things that fasting does is it helps us build our faith and what overcomes the devil you know faith isn't it so 
the way Jesus said in Matthew 17, why didn't that the demon come out because of your unbelief, he says. So how to deal with unbelief? We can intercede, we can pray, we can fast. So as we take up fasting, uh, now you can do it in different ways, but what will happen? Again, there is that protection. There is that taking of authority and dominion and cancelling, crushing the works of the devil. Okay, So fasting is very helpful. A couple of points are there in uh, this section itself that fasting intensifies spiritual hunger, passion, focus. It uh, subdues our fleshly hindrances okay, in uh, offering ourselves to God. Mm. It also uh, subdues and eliminates doubt and unbelief. So that is the advantage of uh, incorporating fasting. So if we can have all these elements in our uh, you know, regular normal life, then it's like maintaining an overcomer's lifestyle. You know, it's like what I told you, Ephesians 6. You're stepping out like a soldier. You have your armor on. Your relationship with God is fine. You're submitted to God. You know, you, uh, uh, whatever responsibility God has given you, you're doing it. And uh, you've employed all these other things, intercession, fasting, you know, uh, the, the, everything else. So you are ready to take on the devil. At every onslaught of the devil, you're taking, taking on, winning, Next, 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 next. And you're just proceeding in your Christian walk and Christian journey. Now, if any one of these is missing, that's where, you know, you have an injured believer, you have a wounded soldier, you know, you have uh, somebody who is attacked and taken by the devil. Uh, but not that, you know, they can't rise up again. Of course, we all do rise up again and take our position, take our authority and see God's glory. So that's about uh, having an overcomer's lifestyle. Any thoughts, any questions about this? Maybe some practical questions that you all have. So yeah, just to reiterate uh, that uh, having an overcoming lifestyle doesn't mean that we will not come under attack. That is normal. Whether you like it or not, so it will keep attacking. But good thing is, we are ready. We are prepared. And uh, those attacks should not you know, really cause any uh, damage for us. Okay, So that's the way every believer can maintain the right lifestyle. Now, we talk so much about the armor of God. Um, now, armor is for protection. But in warfare, you would agree that we also need some, you know, weapons. Because we are not fighting, uh, uh, you know, a normal, natural enemy. We are fighting a spiritual enemy. So if you're fighting a spiritual enemy, you know, we usually pick a weapon suitable for the, the enemy. So if you have, a, uh, you know, sometimes we have these mosquito problems, isn't it? We go out for a camp, a retreat, or even in our homes, then suitable, suitable weaponry for that you have. You probably have, a, a, you know, some, some coil or something that, that you plug in. To deal with that enemy. Now, if there is some other creature, maybe you know, I have seen people. Uh, if there's a rat infestation or some bandigoots or something, they sometimes use a stick, right, to deal with that enemy. So, suitable for the pest, you use a solution. So, when you're talking about Satan, what is a suitable weapon that a believer can use? Because 
obviously i can't just randomly use weapons on this enemy and expect the enemy to uh, uh you know be subdued i have to go by what god's word prescribes and that's the only way that we can overcome this enemy so second corinthians 10 verses 3 to 5 uh, is anyone able to read this passage second corinthians 10 verses 3 to 5 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For though, yes, yes. though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John. So you notice here that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through god so we can't use fleshly weaponry to overcome this spiritual enemy but we use what god tells us to use and talking about you know defeating this enemy and using weapons now we are focusing on the offensive so far, we said, maintain a lifestyle like this. It's more defensive. You're more protected that way you know, if you have a lifestyle. But there are also times when we have to go on the offensive, where we say, okay, come on, let me pick up my weapon and attack the devil. Okay. So we use spiritual weapons, not carnal ones. Uh, and these would, of course, help us to attack. And, you know, to an extent, defend ourselves. So what are these weapons? We'll go over them one by one. So again, you have the armor of God. You have faith, which is both a defend, defending and an offensive weapon. You have the word of God, the blood of Jesus. You have <laughs> the name of Jesus, okay? uh, the power of the spirit and proclaiming his praises. So all these things will uh, damage the work of Satan. Okay? And he wouldn't want us to have any one of these. Now coming back to the armor. <clears throat> now armor, we said that it protects us. Um, but you could also do the, you know, when, when you do the right thing, because it's the right thing even in the midst of adversity or crisis, it's like an offense. So when you are doing righteous acts, it you are actually offending the devil. Okay. So yes, the, web, the uh, parts of the armor are for our defense, but we can kind also um, you know, use it, use it to, to bring down the kingdom of the evil one. And we are called to do this, you know, to put on our armor and be strong in the Lord. So, Ephesians 6 and verse 10, uh, it says, um, I'll read it for us. Yeah. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we, we are called to be strong in God or empowered or in other words uh, maintain our strength or increase our strength in God uh, as we journey through life and in the power of God. In the power of God there is the dominion. okay, The dominion which we have <clears throat> uh, and his might it says. okay, So might has to do with ability. It has to do with ability uh, or you know capability. So we are strong in with God's strength, with the authority that He has given us, and God's ability working through our lives. And how how can we you know be strong by putting on all these weapons? So talking about you know um, using the parts of the armor. In, in a manner to 
um, bring the kingdom of God, one would be the breastplate of righteousness. I already told us that walking in righteousness uh, is so important. Yes, we recognize that we are the righteousness of uh, Christ in righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but we also do what is right. Okay, and that will demolish the kingdom of God. Now, I um, I am able to recall again. We'll talk about this in uh, acts of righteousness. You know, when when we are dealing with um, you know some uh, uh, issues in in a region, but acts of righteousness can really destroy the plan of Satan. So I heard this testimony about a particular pastor and how God worked through his life uh, to bring peace between two communities. Two communities were fighting. Okay. And uh, uh, at that time, you know, God really used the this pastor and you know, his team to bring peace. So when there is strife, these people sowed the seeds of peace. What is that? Acts of righteousness. And through that, you know, peace came between the communities. And also in uh, spiritual warfare, people talk about how when we do the right thing, you know, that also damages the kingdom of the devil for example you know let's say uh, where we are where we are uh, everyone gives a bribe but we decide that we don't want to give a bribe so then what happens you know the the kingdom of god is coming through that walk of righteousness or act of righteousness so <laughs> it is the offensive it you know it crushes it demolishes the structure of uh, the satanic kingdom okay, in that place. So in that way, uh, you know, we can use it as a weapon. Righteousness is a weapon. I'll do the right thing. Okay, let's see what the devil will do. So you're using it like a weapon. Okay, and uh, it's working for you. And again, the truth of God's word. When we know the truth and walk in the truth. Okay, so walking in the truth, is very similar to walking in the um, walking in righteousness. So that also weakens the kingdom of Satan and it destroys the kingdom of Satan. So you use it as a weapon. You walk with the truth of God's word. Then readiness to share the gospel of peace. You know, these are the shoes of the gospel, right? So then what happens is we are equipped we are equipped to share about Christ, share about his salvation. And when we do this, what's happening? You know, people's lives are being touched. The hold that Satan has on people's lives is being destroyed. You know, people are receiving blessings. They are receiving healing, deliverance. Okay, So God's kingdom is expanding and the devil's kingdom is being destroyed. So having that readiness, having the shoes of peace, of the gospel that is also part of the armor and we must uh, have this as a, a weapon that we use against the enemy so every part of the armor you know you can uh, you can talk about it uh, most of them are defensive but then yes you can use some of them uh, in in an offensive way against the kingdom of darkness now faith okay faith is both we said defensive, and I explained that to us. When we have faith, easily, even if some doubts uh, um, are shot at our mind, it doesn't bring us down easily. And with faith, you know, if you have faith, then you can speak to the mountain and uh, you know, ask it to be uprooted and be cast into the sea. So you can use your faith as a weapon as well. And the enemy cannot uh, take you we know right like satan what does he do he's like a a, a roaring lion you know, waiting to uh, devour someone but if a person is walking with faith it's not easy for the devil to devour such a one 
so we can use our faith we can uh, demonstrate our faith by faith also you can take some actions that is the offensive against the devil you say no but i believe god said and this is what god is going to do so i will i will do it you know and satan doesn't like it so you can use faith walk in faith and uh, uh, that will damage the kingdom of darkness then of course we all know that in the armor of god you know we always talk about the the word of god which is the sword of the spirit what do you do with a sword clear cut offensive take it against the enemy right you take down the enemy so using the word of god helps us overcome the lies of the devil now who is the best example who used the word of god as a sword or a weapon anyone you know use the word a lot to overcome satan's lies jesus yeah excellent yeah that's true jesus so what was his way of using the sword every uh, thought that came he said it is written it is written okay so you counter the lies with the truth of what is written and if we can develop that you know our our uh, knowledge in the word and our meditation in the word we will face you know satan and overcome him each time uh with the word of god okay. so uh, i think that is quite clear mm, now the blood of jesus the blood of jesus is our protection and also the blood of jesus is offensive to the devil do you know why because it just reminds the devil that he has lost he doesn't like the blood of jesus okay any reminder of the blood of jesus is a reminder that he lost the battle it's a reminder that these people have already been purchased and there is power that has taken them into another kingdom and i have no grip on these people so it's very frustrating when a uh, satan hears the blood of jesus okay so that is why the blood of jesus is that overcoming weapon you know when we read uh, uh, revelation 12 11 we see that we overcome him with the blood of the lamb and with the word of our testimony the blood of the lamb okay the blood of the lamb speaks a different word it speaks a word of our redemption it speaks a word of our protection okay it uh, speaks of our cleansing what happened you know we, when we do the communion we say this is the blood of the covenant which was shed for the forgiveness of sins right so the cleansing of our sin the blood talks about it and satan doesn't like it it's an offensive against the devil because the blood what does it do it cleanses us what did the blood do it justified us what did the blood do it reconciled us to god it brought us near to god it gave us the boldness to enter into the holiest place it is um uh, the you know the new covenant is sealed by the blood of jesus so you know that that is what sealed the new covenant we are sanctified by the blood of jesus we have redemption by the blood of jesus the church or god's people were bought by the blood of jesus so the ransom price in a sense was the blood that the lord jesus shed on the cross for us our conscience is cleansed from dead works by the power of the blood of jesus we have been redeemed from our vain way of living through the blood of jesus we overcome the enemy through the blood of jesus the passover lamb when moses led the people out of egypt he said take the blood of the lamb and put it on the door posts because that protected them from the plague of the uh, first born child it's a symbol of protection so today when you know i i speak of the blood of jesus that is affirming my protection 
know, under uh, what the Lord Jesus has done. So, you know, for Satan, it's like really no entry zone when you refer to the blood of Jesus and also talk about what the blood has done. So when we, uh, when we say, okay, I'm applying the blood, you know, a lot of believers say that while praying, they say, I pray, I come to you in the name of Jesus and Lord, I apply the blood. What is apply the blood? Apply the blood is recognize what the blood has done. If we simply just say, okay, the blood of Jesus is my protection. I apply the blood on my family. It does not, you know, we, we, we are not understanding the value and the work of the blood. And that's not helpful actually because Satan knows that you don't know. And so when he tries to intrude, violate and all, we are okay because we don't know the blood has sealed the new covenant. The blood has redeemed. The blood has cleansed, sanctified. Okay. Uh, the blood has purchased. We don't know all these things. So where there is no knowledge, that's the place where Satan can play. So how to apply the blood? The best way to apply the blood is know what the blood has done and speak of what the blood has done. So even during deliverances, remember I was saying that sometimes people, it's a good thing. you know. They say, oh, the blood of Jesus. They bring up the blood of Jesus. But then, not really with understanding. Then it loses its essence. But even during deliverance, <clears throat> when we are facing you know, demons and the enemies, if we say, okay, I come against you demons in the name of Jesus. Uh, this is what the blood has done. The blood has redeemed this child. The blood has sanctified. The blood has cleansed. You know, the blood is their protection. Uh, the, they over, or we overcome by the blood. The demons will start trembling because they know that you know what the blood has done. So this is the way we have to apply through the knowledge of what the blood has done for us, not by simply, you know, saying the blood of Jesus. Okay, so the blood has done all these things for us. It bears a good witness for us on the earth. And, um, you know, so uh, the blood of Jesus is a weapon that we use against the enemy. Now coming to the next weapon here, the name of Jesus. Okay, so the name of Jesus, we've learned so much about it. You know, we've learned even during delegated authority. And we said that the kingdom, you know, the kingdom of darkness, it recognizes the kingdom of uh, light and the kingdom of darkness. The demons recognize the people who are, uh, who have authority you know, like who have authority uh, in the kingdom of God. And when we speak the name of Jesus, okay, when we speak the name of Jesus, you can read like, you know, in the um, in the early church, they did this because only when Jesus went, he ascended, he said, okay, now, you know, you, in my name, you cast out, in my name, you heal, in my name, you cleanse the, the leper. So they started using the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, what happens? You shall cast out demons. Okay, We cast out demons by what? By a weapon. And what is that weapon? The name of Jesus. Why is this so special? Because the name carries the authority. In other ways, you can, you can imagine, you know, a throne is backing up that name. So every time you bring up the name of Jesus, it's like all of heaven, which is the greatest throne, throne of God in heaven. It's saying, I'm behind this name. You have to listen to what is being said. So you know, it carries that kind of authority, the name of Jesus. Uh, and we can use it against the devil and say, whenever you say, I come against you in the name of Jesus. Remember that the authority of the throne of heaven, you know, you are kind of, uh, speaking of it and Satan doesn't like it. He, For him, it is a reminder that he was crushed on the cross. Okay, So he, he is just so displeased uh, when you bring up these things. And, you know, this name, we also know that uh, it, is a, it is a name which is more excellent. 
than any other name more excellent than the angels the greatest name that god gave jesus it is a name which you know uh, jesus got by inheritance but also it is a name which was given to him because of what he if you can say earned through his sinless life through his righteous life you know as a son of god he never sinned he lived the most holy and the most perfect life he humbled himself to death on the cross in philippians 2 we read about that and which is why because he humbled himself god exalted him and gave him the name above every other name so it is also because of what jesus has done that he got this most excellent name so the name of jesus carries you know a lot of value and above all it carries a lot of authority so people would just you know like you see the early church casting out demons with the name of jesus okay so using that dominion and authority through the name of jesus okay so what we'll do is i think we are kind of um yeah there are two or three more things here okay fine anyway let me just cover the name of jesus then so there are uh, a whole list of scriptures here that talk about what the name of jesus has done for us uh, we know that we have forgiveness in his name we have salvation in his name our prayers are answered in the name of jesus there is healing in the name of jesus there are miracles in the name of jesus there is authority in the name of jesus it brings the presence of god when we are present <coughs> two or three are gathered in my name i will be there in the midst of them so it brings the presence of god and the name of jesus also brings the power of god so we must be aware that god has given us this weapon to use against the devil we can use the name of jesus we can also go against the devil by the uh, power of the holy spirit now if you uh, uh, recall in matthew 12 jesus cast out a demon spirit okay and when people wanted to know how did he do it you know did he do it through some other demon spirit you know beelzebub he answers them and he says that by the spirit of god i did it by the spirit of god so the holy spirit you know the the spirit that we co labor with he carries the might to go against the devil so the holy spirit and his work is a weapon against the devil okay so by the spirit we can destroy demonic strongholds we can destroy uh, the 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 works of uh, satan uh, and his demons uh, and we must always remember that and even you know scripture says that it is the anointing that breaks the yoke what is the anointing anointing is the spirit okay the the power of the spirit the power of the spirit breaks the power of any demonic work and so we overcome our enemy through the holy spirit and the last point here is that of praises okay our praises are a weapon okay the bible says that uh, um, the god destroys the enemy and the avenger through our praises so there are times when you know we we lift up our praise and like jehoshaphat you all know about the story of jehoshaphat where they went into battle with praises and they won the victory so our praise is a weapon against the devil okay um and, and you know use it and never really forget what our praise is doing to the paths of darkness and, and uh, you know all of us these days you know, we are quite familiar and uh, the song i raise a hallelujah i raise a hallelujah how can a hallelujah help you know against the devil but the bible says that god uses praise as a weapon against the devil so even our most simplest praise you know it's it's giving us all 
these victories against the powers of darkness and we can remember that so use all these weapons depending on how the holy spirit is leading us we can take up these weapons and you know we can tell the devil okay time to flee enough you know enough is enough we will we devil will not flee if you take up a stick or a, you know even your what are these earthly weapons ak47 and you know, all kinds of weapons are there right but it won't work won't work against a spiritual enemy so we have to fight this spiritual enemy good thing is he's already defeated and we have this entire set of weapons spiritual weapons which we have which we have to use against the spiritual defeated enemy okay and enforce our victory okay so i i'll just stop with this for today If there's anything that you want to talk about ask you could if not we will close with a word of prayer okay sure so let's close then and uh, also some of you have submitted your assignments and you have uh, messaged me saying okay submitted submitted uh, i haven't been like able to reply to each of you personally but yes your assignments have come in those of you who haven't then please uh, you know go ahead and finish this first assignment so that we can um, have the next one soon okay let's close uh, uh, anyone who is able to pray I'll pray, Master. <clears throat> yes, Father, sir. we want to thank you for this time. Thank you for helping us to come before you and to learn from your word, God. We submit us as a class into your hands, Lord. We pray that we would be able to um, be aware of all the works of the enemy and to stand against it with the armor that you have given us, and also to uh, leave out from the authority that you have given. as lord jesus we thank you for pastor nancy lord we thank you for this beautiful time you've given us we give you praise in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you john and uh, thank you everyone for joining god bless you have a, a wonderful day and a great weekend we will meet again next week bye for now <laughs>